It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor Sports South. Wow, what a great look out there with the Gulf of Mexico, crystal clear waters, beautiful white sand beaches, pool, kids playing. What a great scene. Hi everybody, welcome in to Orange Beach, Alabama. This is just down the street from Gulf Shores, Alabama, one of the great vacation and resort meccas in the entire south and southwest regions of our country. We have come here for one reason, and it's not the vacation stuff, it's the fishing. Right behind us is Mobile Bay, Alabama. And what a lot of people don't realize is it is one of the great destinations for lots of different species of fish. But what we're here specifically to do this week is to search for my very first ever triple tail. Now, if you don't know what a triple tail is, which I really didn't before this trip, it is a very strange fish. They migrate along these bays just off the Gulf of Mexico in the hot summertime months. They hang out along poles and pieces of debris. They float right near the surface. It can be very difficult to make one bite and even harder to catch one, but it can be some of the most exciting fishing you'll ever do. And we're gonna do something a little different this week. We're doing things in reverse. This is a flashback. We've actually already been out fishing. We were on the water this morning, right at sunup with Captain Patrick Garmison, who runs Ugly Fishing Charter Service right here in Mobile Bay, and we've already caught our fish. And I can tell you, we've got some of the most spectacular footage of this triple tail fishing that uh, you could possibly imagine. You will not want to miss this a little bit later on in the show. We're going to fish for some flounder and speckled trout first, and then get to some sight fishing for triple tail a little bit later. While we're out doing that, we're taking you around our region for your very latest fishing reports from our team of insider reporters on your local lakes, rivers, and bays. Now we're located at the beautiful Perdido Beach Resort. Great accommodations, great dining. What a great spot and we'll give you all the information if you'd like to book a trip right here to the place we're staying. We'll put it up at the end of the show. Right now, we get you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. When we come back, we transition you back to early this morning, trying to do a little speckle trout and flounder fishing. The Salooner tables are pointing to Sunday as the best choice for fishing this weekend. The peak times will take place a little bit before sunrise and again at 4.58 in the afternoon. The sun will rise at 6.33 and set at 8.15. And evenings will be lit by a moon that is 69% visible. Stay with us, we have all of your fishing updates from around the region on the way. Plus, I'll return with Wally Marshall to answer this week's Ask the Pro question about crappie fishing. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. By Mercury Marine, official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. That's something shaking its head kind of funny flounder good oh there decent, it is decent flounder look at this all right all right hey welcome back everybody fox sports outdoors today there's a flounder for you right there we got a little something working we're with uh captain patrick garmison and we are out on mobile bay today and there's a good start beautiful flounder this is just something to get us going. We're kind of in the warm-up phase right now. We're uh, going to do something a lot more difficult in a little bit. I'll tell you what that is, but we're, gonna, we're releasing fish today, and it does my heart bad to release this fish. What are we fishing, and, and what is this area right here? It's got kind of an interesting history. The name of the, the area is called Katrina Cut. Uh, this is an extension of Dolphin Island that was breached during actually Hurricane Ivan made a small cut, Katrina blew it into a bigger cut. And uh, during the oil spill, they were allowed to come back and put rocks here. And they installed all these rocks and now it's just a fish haven. We're gonna do something, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're gonna go out here in just a little bit and start zigzagging our way around and try to find a triple tail. I've never caught a triple tail, as I mentioned at the beginning. We're gonna give that a shot, but we thought we'd just try to get a little action working here first. 
So we'll do this for a little while. We might catch one more, but uh, coming up here in a little bit, you don't want to miss this because uh, if we can find one of these triple tail, it is some of the most exciting fishing you've ever, ever seen. And that just makes my heart throb just thinking about it. Right now though, we're going to get things started though with some fishing and lake reports for you. Let's catch up with Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. This portion of the show is brought to you by the state of Mississippi, where fishing fun is year round and where the Mississippi Gulf Coast offers some of the best inshore angling and offshore adventures anywhere in the world. So start your fishing adventure in the true south, Mississippi. Well, warming water temperatures have turned on a lot of fish along the southeast coast, especially in Georgia where the uh, black tip sharks have just showed up along the beach. These are great light tackle fish. They'll go 50 to 150 pounds. Uh, you can catch them on bait without any problem, but when they first arrive like they are now, uh, they're, they're really hungry and looking for those bait schools and you can catch them uh, on topwater plugs, you can catch them on uh, jigs, you can even catch them on fly rod uh, uh, streamers and popping bugs too. You get up behind the shrimp boats, chum a little bit, get them kind of chummed up and going and throw flies and uh, lures into them and it is just great sport. Uh, along the uh, coastal area, along the beaches, there's uh, good fishing for whiting. Uh, those fish are being caught on small pieces of shrimp, little pieces of squid uh, that are in the surf and they're also around the sounds and the inlets. Inshore in Georgia, I was talking to Captain Tim Cutting on St. Simons Island, and he's doing pretty well on redfish and some flounder. Uh, the water temperature inshore is 70 to 74 degrees. It's just getting good and stable now, and uh, that fishing has turned out pretty well for the inshore species. Over in Alabama, I was talking to uh, Captain Kevin Olmstead. Uh, he's had some good, very, very good days, but you gotta watch the weather. It's been a lot of rain over there, and the trout tend to be a little bit deeper uh, looking for salty water. Kevin had a really good day fishing the lower bay. Uh, fishing seven to eight feet of water on artificial reefs using live shrimp. He said it's been difficult finding live shrimp, but that particular day they went through 11 dozen shrimp to catch 80 fish. Over in Mississippi, I was talking to Captain Sonny Schindler uh, over out of Bay, Bay St. Louis, and he also is having some very good fishing, but he's got to watch the weather. They're looking for clear water. Uh, that's the key to catching trout over there too. They're catching plenty of fish on jigs with grubs. I'll try different colors to find the one that works and they're also catching some flounder and some redfish mixed in with them. Welcome to the Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi Freshwater Fishing Report. This week's update is sponsored by Jimmy Jacobs Outdoor Adventures, your source for guidebooks to fishing and hiking in the southeast. Visit our website at www.jimmyjacobsoutdoors.com. Now angling action can get fantastic when the bluegill are bedding. This spawning takes place from May to August each year across the south. And the best time to be fishing is a few days on either side of the full moon. That's especially true in May. Right now we're coming off of that full moon phase, so the spawn should be on in your area. Spawning areas are easy to find because they're usually in shallow water. Look for those pockmarked round beds on the sandy bottom in, in the shallows. You want to toss out a cricket, a grasshopper, or a worm on the bottom, or you can suspend it under a float. But start fishing at the edge and move in as you catch those fish that are hanging on the perimeter. Lake Demopolis on the Black River in west central Alabama is the best big lake in the cotton state for catching bluegill. This 10,000 acre impoundment is loaded with shallow backwater spawning habitat. Half pound brim are common here, and don't be too surprised if you catch bluegill running up to a pound each. In Georgia, Marvin Public Fishing Area on the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center near Mansfield is another good bet. This facility has 22 ponds of one to 95 acres each, with a total of 295 acres of water. All but one of these lakes have bluegill in them. In Mississippi, a good bet is 68 acre Lake Terry. It's located in the DeSoto National Forest near Beaumont. It has great bank access and it gives up half pound bluegills during the spawn. Oh, hey Barry. Barry, I just got one back here on this pogey. Good? Yeah, it's a good trout. Come right up behind the boat and ate it. Get your head up, baby. Yeah, I'm just trying to be easy. Don't pull the hook. There we go. Got him. All right. Yes, sir. Look at this. There's your big trout right there. That is what you fish for in a tournament, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. 
Captain Patrick Garmison's with us today, doing some trout fish, actually doing just fishing. We're, yeah. uh, we've already set it up. We caught that flounder earlier, right off this rock levee that runs down here, and you were fishing live bait. Talk about the bait you were fishing. Yeah, we're fishing uh, live pogies or menhaden, um, but just, just free lining and uh, throwing the bait um, back here along the side of the boat. The bait gets to fr swim freely. And uh, this fish actually bit it right behind the boat. So it actually chased it right up to the boat and, and uh, that's where he got it. That's so. amazing. We're, we're letting yeah. our fish go today. We're not keeping any fish. So we're gonna gently ease that fish back. Let him get his breath a little. And he's wanting to go. We actually caught several trout today on shrimp, but they were, they were smaller trout. And then he put that big bait on and we'll show you a quick shot of what, what one of them looks like. Here's a big pogey. Quick shot, but uh, you don't want to miss what comes next because uh, we're going to spend the rest of the day looking for a triple tail. Stay with us right now, though. We've got more fishing reports coming your way. Hey, folks, Captain E here with your Carolina's report. This week brought to you by Marshall's Marine. Located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina, we're your bass boat leader since 1969, and for all your nitro and bass tracker needs, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. Tell you what, the full moon that just came and gone this week has been incredible for everything from fresh water and the spawning continuing to the salt water where my favorite species to target for the next couple weeks is going to start making that annual migration up the beaches chasing those big schools of manhaden just like i've got here in my hand the cobia is one of the most prolific battling fish that you can tangle with in the salt water get out and chase these schools of manhaden that'll be running right, right along the beach from five foot of water out to 20 foot of water. What I use is a heavier class rod, such as the one you see here. And I've got a simple rig. Got a nose hook on it for a circle hook and a treble in the rear end. All I do is attach them just like such, giving the fish some room to swim freely, just like that. Throw it over and toss it around these schools of fish. Talking about the full moon, those last bit of bass that have not spawned out will be doing so. Get ready to get onto that post spawn mode for your bass. Also the striped bass continue to be a great target in the Savannah River system as well as on Lake Kiwi and Lake Greenwood. It's a great time of the year to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Remember, fish smarter not harder and keep your chaos organized. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Buy lose, setting a new standard of fishing performance. Feel the difference by Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Hey, look at it over there, Barry. What? That's a log. You yeah, a floating, big floating log right there. Is that what they get on? Oh man, look at there, there's a fish on it. What is it? It's a triple tail. Is it? Look at him. Look at him. He's oh right there on just okay. down current of it. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors. We're on Mobile Bay with Captain Patrick Garmison. We've switched over now to triple tail fishing. We're trying to sight fish a triple tail. We see a log and he sees a triple tail on it. I'm going to grab a rod right here. Okay. I've got a, a popping cork and a live shrimp right there with a little treble hook. I'm going to try to throw it up current. We've got an outgoing tide. Got it. Got it. Right up current. And now I'm gonna let that current just drift it right by that log and we hope that triple tail comes off that log and sees that shrimp. Come on, baby. He turned on it. He turned on the cork. He just ate it. He's, he's on it. Is, did he get it? Got him. We got a triple tail. All right, Barry. I'm gonna try to get, try to push him between. Yeah, we just need him away from this log. There he comes up right there. Let's net him, let's net him. Oh, this is dangerous right here. Now he's going away from the log, which is a good thing. Come up and roll over, baby. We got him. Woo! Yay! Woo! <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a giant triple tail. Oh, my heart's pounding. What a fight that fish put up. Oh yeah, that thing is bottomed, to, it's okay. a 15 pound boga and it's bottomed out. Look at this big daddy. 
There's a big triple tail. Oh my gosh. My that first is. triple tail ever, folks, and you saw it live right there. We got a shrimp, got a, a cork, got the right cast, let the current drift it around the log. He came off the log, ate the shrimp, pulled the cork down, and then the fight was on. My loose inshore saltwater reel did a great job there because I loosened the drag on it several times. Every time he would make a run, I loosened the drag, let him run, and then every time he would turn towards me, I, I tightened that drag back down. And uh, does this thing have a weight it's, on it? It's bottomed out. Bottomed out. Yeah, it's that's 15. a 15 pound bow and it's bottomed out. So this, this fish weighs more than 15 pounds. We don't know how much it weighs, but it's more than 15. All right, back this fish goes. She's still plenty, plenty lively. Thank you, we appreciate the business. And you're gonna, you're gonna revive her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was gonna grab it, tail. Okay, she's loose. See you, buddy, appreciate it. Right now, you get more fishing reports. Let's check in with Crispin Powley. He's got our fishing reports this week from Tennessee and Kentucky. Hey guys, everybody knows that Stormer is the industry leader in foul weather gear, but what you might not know is they also offer top of the line performance wear. So it's moisture wicking material, it's UV protectant. Go to stormerusa.com and figure out how they can show you how to control the elements. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you a real quick rundown of what's going on in the Tennessee and Kentucky region. Um, first off, most of the fish are shallow. I don't care what species you're looking for, they're primarily shallow right now due to uh, the, the, the time of year they're spawning and so forth. Your bluegill and shell crackers, your, your panfish are, um, they are not quite full blown, but they're right around the corner from it. Crickets and night crawlers fish with or without a float around bedding areas. And they seem to always bed in the same places. If you've caught them off a bed in the past, there's a good chance they'll come back to that bed again. Um, bass are as easy to catch as they can be all year. You don't have to be an electronics guru. Uh, you can go fish around the bank and look for flooded buck bushes, willow trees, any type of vegetation, and chances are you're gonna get your string stretched a little bit. Catfish is, the catfish is really good. Uh, they are, um, in shallower rocky areas, kind of transition areas from deep to shallow. Um, if there's current nearby, that's a plus, but you don't want to be in direct current. And um, night crawlers or chicken livers, predominantly fished on the bottom, will catch those bigger spawning catfish. The crappie bite's good too, looking less than eight feet of water. Um, between deep water and spawning areas, in stake beds, brush piles, or um, man-made cover of any sort, stumps, so forth, the crappie are biting really good right now. Guys, it's a wonderful time to fish in Tennessee and Kentucky. The weather's great, the fish are shallow. We'd love to see you on the water. God bless. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Introducing the XI-5 for ultimate boat control. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Welcome back everyone. It's time now for the Ask the Pro question. Your chance for advice from professional anglers. This week, Gene wants to know, where would you look for crappie in a lake with very little brush or structure? For the answer, we checked with Mr. Crappie, Wally Marshall. Hey, that's a perfect question right there because I've fished a lot of lakes like down in Florida that's just a sugar bowl and they don't have a lot of structure in it. Submerged grass, submerged brush piles maybe, you know, but you got to look for shade because crappie like to get in back in deep corners. So I would key on boat docks or I would key on pontoon boats that's on that lake, especially the one that's got a bunch of cobwebs on them because they've been sitting there for a long time and shoot that jig up under them pontoon boats and you can catch a lot of fish. Thank you, Wally. If you have a question to ask one of the pros, go to our website, follow the Ask the Pro link and send us your information. Now let's find out which big fish picture wins someone a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. We're back at the Perdido Beach Resort at Orange Beach, Alabama after a great day's fishing at Mobile Bay. Gonna give you all the contact information in just a moment if you'd like to book your own trip here. Right now though, it's time for our Costa Catch winner this week. Every week, someone wins a free pair of Costa sunglasses here on the show. This week's winner is Steve Wilson of West Union, South Carolina, showing off an eight pound largemouth bass he caught at Lake Joe Cassie in South Carolina. 
If you would like to enter our contest, all you have to do is go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. On the right-hand side of the front page, click on the Costa Catch of the Week box. Follow the instructions to send us your big fish photo and you could win your very own free pair of Costas. You can see all of their frame and lens styles at their website. Just go back to the front page of our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com. Click on the Costa logo and you can see everything there, including the frame styles that we were wearing on this week's episode called Tag. Next up, it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, the right gear if you'd like to come fishing here at Mobile Bay. And the main thing I want to show you is the rig for triple tail. We used a little popping cork, but not in the traditional sense. It was a popping cork with a little short leader, only about 18 inches long. Below that, a small hook, and I can't believe the small treble hook Captain Garmison uses to catch these giant triple tail. I caught that 20, nearly 20 pound triple tail on a little treble hook like you see there, and no weight below it. You want to keep it right up at the surface. Last year, I went off on a rant on stuff that matters about the evils of the payday and title loan industry. I'm not a fan of these companies because they trap people at the moment of their weakest need. They charge them exorbitant interest rates. They roll those loans over and over again back into a new one and they trap people in a lifetime of misery and debt. Many state governments have not had the stomach to do much about these industries, but many cities and municipalities have. There are two things you can do. One, never ever do business with a payday or title loan company unless you plan to immediately pay that loan back and unless you're fully aware of what interest rates those companies are charging you and you're willing to pay it. And secondly, talk to your city government about passing some laws to restrict these companies in your city. I hope you enjoyed our trip to Orange Beach, Alabama and Mobile Bay. If you'd like to book a trip here, we stayed at the Perdido Beach Resort. It's a beautiful place, great dining, great pools, great entertainment, beautiful white sand beaches, just steps outside the back door, crystal blue waters. We thoroughly enjoyed our trip here and you can book a trip here at the information and the contacts you see there on your screen. Also, if you'd like to book a charter trip out on Mobile Bay and catch some speckled trout, redfish, or even a triple tail like we caught on today's show, you can contact Captain Patrick Garmison at the information you see on your screen. He would be happy to take you, your family, or your group out for a charter trip. Really think you would enjoy a trip here to beautiful Gulf Shores, Alabama, Mobile Bay, and the Perdido Beach Resort. Hey, don't forget to join us for next week's episode of the show. We'll be on in our normal time slot at 6 p.m. Thursday, the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And if you miss any of our episodes, you can always catch the latest episode 24-7 at the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. And something new, right below that, you'll see the archived past episodes of our show, plus lots of other product how-to videos that could be very helpful for you just Click on that link right below our latest videos and go to our video pages. We also have our Twitter feed up with lots of news, photos, video, and we have our Facebook page up. You can check us out, the information again you see on your screen. From Orange Beach, Alabama and Mobile Bay, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.